Hey everyone, James here from Payload. Today I'm gonna to do a quick video on how to finally get rid of WordPress in your stack because it's 2022 and nowadays there's literally no reason to use WordPress. Um, I just created like a quick little dummy project to show what a typical WordPress and advanced custom fields website looks like from a headless perspective and um, then I'm gonna compare it to Payload and I'm gonna show you how much better it is to do the same thing inside of Payload instead of WordPress. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've been using WordPress for over 10 years and when the rise of the headless CMS came out like 2016, WordPress was still somehow surprisingly the best bet because ACF is pretty powerful. Especially with like features like conditional logic where you check a checkbox and you get a couple more fields and then you uncheck the checkbox and those fields go away. Like I'm honestly floored that more headless CMS don't support that very critical core feature. And so, you know, we did, even at my agency, we used WordPress for a lot of very big websites just because of the things that ACF could do. Um, but I always hated it. it. It just was always a mess. It felt like I was putting lipstick on a pig and just forcing WordPress into submission at every single turn. And today I'm going to show you maybe just a typical WordPress ACF headless instance. And then I'm gonna show you why it sucks, frankly. And I'm gonna show you how you can do the same thing with payload. Okay, so the first thing is I will die happy if I never have to look at another functions.php file. Like, I'm not trying to make anybody sad right now, but functions.php, even the name of that file gives me hives. Like, what, what does that mean? It's just a blank PHP script and you have to customize WordPress inside of your theme in this functions.php file. It's just a free for all script. You need to go read WordPress documentation to even understand what it does or what it's capable of. And don't get me started on the admin panel, which is a wild mixture of outdated jQuery and then the newly introduced Gutenberg editor, which is React, but it's still got both jQuery and React on the admin UI. I just I mean, we wouldn't even customize the admin UI in WordPress because it's just gonna be such a headache. We would just say to the client, sorry, this is either gonna be super expensive to do or we need to not support it because it's gonna be a headache. Now with payload, everything starts with a payload config and it's strongly typed. You get modern TypeScript development practices. It's very simple. You get IntelliSense, IntelliSense right in your IDE so that you can hover over the properties and see what they're doing. And, what you can pass and immediately get errors if your config's not right. And you don't need to learn payload. We try to keep our conventions as simple as possible so that you can practice TypeScript, just in whatever TypeScript you want, you can organize your project however you want, but you still get that strong IntelliSense right in your IDE. Now I'm gonna show you what we did in WordPress and then I'm gonna compare it to what we did in payload. So right off the bat, I've got this repo here. The, the code for this is open source and it's on our GitHub. I'll put a link in the description, but I've got a payload folder and I've got a WordPress folder. And right away, here's the, oh, all these files just to run WordPress and you have to version control them or you have to make your development process a super pain to merge in your custom files with a WordPress install. For simplicity, I'm just gonna keep it all in the repo. But the WP config is where you can configure everything. And then you go into the folder and you find your theme and look at your functions.php file. And this is pretty simple. All I'm doing is I'm using advanced custom fields to add a header options page. Because if you've ever built something complex with WordPress, you know that you can't just use that menus, the built-in menus, because it's so simple. What if you need a mega menu or a dropdown? You need to probably roll that yourself with ACF. So I'm registering an options page here. This is like, the, like a global data or something. And then we just are registering a custom post type for let's say custom posts. Whatever, blah, 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 pretty simple. Lots of code for that, by the way, not fun. And then we have our custom fields, which I've exported from ACF. And so I'm gonna show you this in the browser real quick. Let me hop over to WordPress. Custom fields, everybody's familiar with this. I've got pages and posts, I've got custom posts, and I've got the header. And if I go to pages, it's pretty simple just for like this, the sake of this video. All I have is like a hero type, so I can choose from full screen or basic. And if I choose full screen, then it will give me this background field so I can upload an image or whatever. But um, it's just really simple. And then you've got your content. And then for the appearance, I've registered a header. Let me go over here. And this header is 
just for like a main menu or something for a website. So you've got a link, you can have menu items, it's either a link or a submenu. So I can click on this and you can see conditional logic. That's, like I said, it's one of the good parts about ACF. And I've already built all this and I've exported these um, files out to PHP and plop them in my, in my functions.php file. And then I've got a backup of the JSON because with ACF, if you're working with another developer, you should keep the JSON exported so that the other developer can import it and then use it and customize it and re-export it. And you should also um, register your fields in PHP so that it's faster and it doesn't rely on the database. And then I just have this strange file here. It's a style.css. Never understood this, but this is how you name your theme. And you need this file for a theme, which is pretty mind-blowing. Um, and then I have the GraphQL Playground pulled up right here. And I wanted to show you kind of like what I'm looking at here. So first thing I've got pages. Um, wait, let me back up. Let me show you the plugins that we have installed. So the first thing I always do with WordPress is disable Gutenberg across the board. Um, it's wild to me how much time and effort they put into Gutenberg, but it still saves all the Gutenberg content as just one big HTML string. So then if you're doing a headless WordPress on the front end, you need to dangerously set inner HTML with just all that HTML. You can't map it to components. You can't, it's not maintainable. You just render out all that HTML, which is pretty wild to me. But so I always install the classic editor. Then we have advanced custom fields. We have WP GraphQL, and then we have the GraphQL for advanced custom fields. So like at this point, this isn't even WordPress anymore. This is like shoehorned. But let me go over to the GraphQL and let me, oh, well, that took forever. Um, close up the documentation and I just have a quick query for pages. I'm just going to get the title, the content, some of the ACF fields, posts, custom posts, the media, and then the ACF options for the header. And if I hit play, the first thing that I notice is that, let me zoom in so you guys can read this. If I go to the network panel and I hit play, that's 246 milliseconds. This is all local. I'm not even hitting a remote server. It took 248 millise 46 milliseconds to get this query. That's really, really, really slow. And I'm not even really doing anything yet. I'm just, this is a simple, simple query and the page isn't even complex, but it still took 246 milliseconds. Pretty wild. Okay, so on the other hand, here's what we have for payload. This is the entry point, payloadconfig.ts, just like I mentioned. And it's insanely simple. It is self-descriptive. I've got collections for custom posts, pages, posts, and media, just to kind of reproduce what we did in WordPress. And then I have one global, which is like that ACF options page for the header. And these configs are pretty simple. If you know payload, they're really straightforward. Um, you can see that in the pages and posts, because we're rewriting these or we're writing these ourselves, we can do fancy things like reuse fields. So I have page and post fields in this file it's got the title and the hero with the type and then the content and the background, just like we had in WordPress, but it's super easy to reuse this and it makes it really maintainable. And then I have just that custom um, post type defined just like we had in WordPress. But you can see that the config is super simple and much easier to version control and maintain. You don't have to export JSON or anything like that. It's just ready to go. And this is what it looks like in the UI. So if I go over to pages and I click on my sample page, you can see here that this is all pretty straightforward payload stuff, but I can, I still have that conditional logic. So you can see that the full screen, the background image goes away when I click on that. And we honestly took the best parts of WordPress and ACF and made sure that payload can support all of it. And that's kind of um, what allowed us to finally ditch WordPress. I don't want to have to make any concessions. If WordPress and ACF did something, payload can also do it. And it's all done in just very, very simple code. And so if we go over to the GraphQL playground here, I've got the same query that I had in WordPress, and I've got all of this checked into the repo, so you can kind of take a look at these queries yourself. But if I hit play here, that's 48 milliseconds. Now compare that to the WordPress query that was 246. It's the same thing, but it's just blazingly fast. It's because there's not really a whole lot going on here. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not shoehorning in custom logic and installing plugins to do things that a CMS should do right out of the box. So it's just much faster and more maintainable. Now the last thing I want to look at is how 
the data is stored in the database with WordPress versus payload. And WordPress, as you probably know, started off as a blogging platform and then kind of got extended and extended into doing a lot more. But it basically puts all of your content in the WP posts table. And really all you have is the simple things that apply to all types of posts. And that includes pages and media and custom post types. You've got the author, the date, the content, the title, etc. But then all the other content, all of our ACF fields get jammed into the post meta table. So you can see hero type. This is for post ID two and it's full screen. So that corresponds to WP posts, but you can see this is all very WordPress specific. It does not reflect the shape of the data that you want to store. And to actually like repurpose this in another platform, let's say like as a true headless CMS where it's not, it's platform agnostic, right? You can't do that because all of this data is very proprietarily shaped to WordPress only. But payload creates a custom collection for each different collection schema that you define. And here's our pages. So we have hero and we have type all right here on one document content. We've got um, the posts, we've got the custom posts and they're all, they're all just reflecting a one-to-one -one replication of what you tell it to look like. There's no payload specific magic going on here at all. It's just your data. It's much more clean and much more portable. And then if we go to the, to the header, we can drop down these items and you can see that all that data is just stored basically exactly like you told it to be stored, which is a beautiful thing. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, this was kind of cathartic for me, honestly. I have built so much in WordPress for so many years. I'm just super pumped to have a better alternative nowadays. And I really, really want to see the people on Reddit stop telling people to use WordPress as a headless CMS because it just doesn't, it's not suited for that. Like if you're going to install a theme and you're going to build out like a quick restaurant site or something, sure. But if you're building something that you want to be proud of, WordPress is not the solution anymore. And you should give Payload a shot. Um, I'm really passionate about it. If you can't tell, it's um, been something that I've just been absolutely thrilled to work on. And we have so much more coming. It's completely free and open source. And if you want to help support us, um, stop by the repo and give us a star on GitHub because that's going to let us keep Payload free and it's going to let us support it and receive investment and just continue to build out the features and functionality that we offer. And it's really exciting time for us. Got a lot of important announcements coming up soon. And you can also expect more tutorials, guides, boilerplates. We've got an e-commerce boilerplate. We've got a subscriptions boilerplate, lots of stuff coming out over the next couple months and we are pumped. Hope you like it and I will see you soon.